We're live. The fan. The Word of God says that if we decree a thing, it shall be established. Uh, we don't realize how powerful the words that we speak are. When you speak them into the air or you speak them over someone, how powerful. Uh, you know, there's life and death. It's in the tongue. So what we say is important. So we've been saying, um, uh, speaking life, we've been saying that uh, intercession city shall live again. We've been saying it every day. And we've been making this decree every day. Uh, I don't think there's one day we've missed uh, not um, declaring this, this decree of life over intercession city. So I will read it to you now. This is the uh, decree of 24-7, 100 days of prayer revival for Intercession City. Intercession City, live again. Father God, we come to you as one in Christ, as one with you, Father, and as one with one another for your plan, your call, your purpose upon Intercession City. We cry out, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. We open the gates to Intercession City to usher in the King of glory. We, your people, shall build a house of prayer in intercession city unto the Lord our God. Our hands shall be strong to build and we shall not be troubled in this building. There shall be no counselors hired against us to trouble us in the building nor to frustrate this purpose. We shall set up the walls and join the foundation. We decree that the work shall not cease, for your eye, O God, is upon this work. We are the servants of you, Father God, of heaven and earth. We seek to build a house that was built these many years ago. But after that, the house was built. Our fathers provoked the God of heaven, and the house of prayer was destroyed, and the people scattered. But Father, repentance for the sin has been granted and the order to build again was given in the year 2017. Father, the records have been searched and the original purpose and call upon Intercession City made known. Now Father, according to your call upon Intercession City, we ask you to raise up the tabernacle of David that was fallen and close up the breaches father we ask you to build it as it was in the days of old father bring again your people to intercession city and and that they rebuild this city father plant them upon this land and that they shall no more be pulled out of the land which you have given to them we ask that all treasuries removed be restored and brought again in the house of prayer in Intercession City. We pray, Father, and all that all provisions needed for the completion of this house of, of intercession be supplied according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus, that the work not be hindered, that sacrifices of praise and petition of sweet savors of sacrifice be made unto you, God of heaven and earth, that your name shall dwell here. Lord, you make us joyful, and you turn those in authority unto us to strengthen our hands in the work of the house of God. Intercession City, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Lord shall rise upon you. 
the people shall come to your light and officials as to the brightness of your rising. They shall come to see what is happening here. We proclaim this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Intercession City is the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. We shall build the old waste places and shall raise up the former desolations. We shall repair this wasted city, the desolation of 70 years. We, your builders, shall be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. Intercession City, for your shame you shall receive double. You, Lord God, will direct the work in truth. We, your builders, will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Our souls shall be joyful in our God. The Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth from the Intercession City. You, Intercession City, shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of our God. You shall no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall your land be termed desolate. But your, but you, O intercession city, shall be called Hephzibah, delight. For the Lord delights in you. And your land be term, termed Beulah, married. For the Lord delights in you, intercession city. And your land shall be married. Our God shall rejoice over you as he decrees my house, intercession city, shall be called a house of prayer. So be it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Baba Baba has to take over the belly as she tied. Oh, Yarabba has to take over the baby she can have a higher. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Baba higher and ever who seek an Arabba higher. Oh, Rebbe oh god oh god oh god your presence father your presence oh god your presence oh god your presence oh god hallelujah oh we thank you for your presence oh god your presence, oh God, come to this place once again. Oh, your presence, oh God, oh, your presence, oh God, come to place come to this place once again father you are so welcome oh you are welcome 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 you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Nobody but you, Jesus. Shut up, take it to the most Ah, oh, Rebebe, she can have a house, take over a Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, Rabba Baba 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 Hasi Kerere Boshata. Oh, Rebe Bebe Bebe Shikara Bahasa Nayele Leoko. Ah, Rebe Bebe Shikere Bohosi Karanabahai. Oh, glory, 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 glory. 
My God, my God, my God. Ah, rebe be shikara raba hasi te kore be 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 sheta. I kore raba hasi te kara ba hasaya. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, se te kore be be shikata kaba robo hosata. O rebe shikate kara ba hasanda yelele o kore be 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 se. Ah. Whoa, Rabba Hasite. Ah, Seteko Rebebe Shikata. Whoa, Rebebe Shikata Rabba Hasaya. Ah, Yedebebebe, hey, say, take, hey, Roba Ha. Oh, we are Siketeko Rebebe Shikata. Oh, Rebebe Shikara Rabba Hasata. Ikara Rabba Haseteko Rebebebe Shika. Anda yelele oko rebe be 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 baha yelele oko rebe be shi. Anda yelele sonde karara bahasa. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Speak i karara bahase as only as you can. Speak i karara bahase te go rebe lele asa. I kerera boho rebe be a shikara bahasa daya. Oh, rebe be shikara rabaha, eleo go rebe be be hase. Oh, rababahasi te karabahasata. Ah, yete te go rebe be hase te go rabaha. Oh, rebe be hase te karabahasi te go reboho shata. Oh, rabahasi te karabahasaya. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, we magnify your holy name. Oh, God. We listen for your voice, oh, God. We release your voice into this region, Father, and we listen to hear your instruction. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I heard the Lord say, a double-minded man receiveth nothing of the Lord. And he said unto me, into intercession city, he said unto me, to intercession city, he says, you can no longer be double-minded. No longer can your sin, I say, take over of a high, rule, but righteousness cries out from the very earth, from the very streets. Righteousness cries out in the region, but you Ah, Robo Hosikata want to hold on to your sin, the blood of Jesus. No more. We declare in the name of Jesus that Jesus Christ is Lord over Intercession City. Jesus Christ is Lord over Intercession City. City. Ah, yes, yes. Intercession city. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for us. He sits at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for us. He sits at the right hand. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for you, intercession city. And he says, live again. Live again. Live again. Ah! My robo shikatake robo hosa. Breathe. Bow raba sike yara yeleleo ko rebebe shata. Breathe. Yada yeleleo kumbaba sike teka baba sata. We bind up the spirit of division right now. You have no place. You've been served notice. You have been served notice. Now I tell you to leave. You cannot play here anymore. This is not, no longer is Intercession City your playground. No longer is Intercession City your playground. No longer is Intercession City your playground. 
Ikarabase, Roshi Karabahasata, Reshe Karabahasanda Yeleo Korebebe. Whoa, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, 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 Lord Jesus. Come, 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 come. Whoa, come. Ah, yes, yes, yes. We bind up the lies of the enemy that would come through the words of witchcraft. We're not moved. We're not going to be moved. We're not going anywhere. Oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. You know, Peter came to Jesus. Let me see music. Peter came to Jesus when Jesus was informing the disciples, and I'm not going to be before you long that I'm aware of. <laughs> Glory to God. But Peter came before the disciples when I mean, Peter came before Jesus, yeah, when Jesus was telling the disciples that he was going away. Oh, God. Ah. And you know, in, in many ways, Peter was double-minded because Jesus turned to him because he was saying, oh, no, Lord, please don't tell us that because we don't want you to go. We, we don't want you to go. No, Lord, let, let it not be so. But Jesus turned to him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, see, there is a plan for intercession city. shall come from. Oh, amen. But see, Peter stood there and he just thought, oh, he just, you know, he loved Jesus and he thought that he just, he just knew what to say. Jesus turned and looked at him and he said, listen, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are an offense unto me because you do not know the plan of God. Oh, my God. I speak to the offense in the land. Oh, Satan, you're a liar in the name of Jesus. That's what the enemy was trying to do today, Robert. That's what was in stirring coming up from the coming up from the foundation today. You know, since we've been here, God's been the foundation has been trembling. <laughs> the foundation. We are on one of the original foundations. The tent is on one of the original foundations that was built in the 20s. And the foundation has been shaking. And what it's been doing, it's been shaking in literally the history. Good and bad has been coming up. And every so often, it comes to test us. To see if we're going to grab hold and run with it. Because if we grab hold whom God has sent to bring redemption as by, by way to, uh, uh, I would say, to bring redemption through. If we grab hold to it, then the enemy says, aha, oh, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Oh, brother, she can't talk to the Messiah. Whoa! No, I speak to the spirit of offense. And I say, no, in Jesus' name. You have no place. You're not welcome. So I command you to go. I have authority over 
you because God has given it to me. I have authority over you, you spirit of this of offense. Father tells me to submit myself to the Lord God Almighty and resist the devil, and you must flee. I resist the devil of offense. And I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Roshi No offense. No offense. No offense. Jesus said to Peter, you are an offense because you don't know the plan of God. What? But, but Lord, no, 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 no. No. And so quickly, we want to think we know everything. We want to think we grown. That's what the Lord told me one day. I was going into a church service one day, and I could hear the people in the church praising God. I could hear the people in the church just worshiping and praising God, and it's going on about church service. And God said to me, listen at my children. They think they grown. I said, well, some of them got an old Lord. <laughs> he said, they think they grown. They think they know all my plans. They think they all they got it all worked out. They think they have the answer. He said they don't know. He said they do not know. And I'm gonna tell you, it has been time and time and time again. When we came in here on the 21st, we had been coming for two years, praying and fasting and doing all kinds of things and prepare, uh, basically preparing what we're doing now. And we thought we knew the story. Man, Wesley, Wesley got the book written and everything and all of a sudden we hear a, a whole a whole other chapter. <laughs> oh my God. We thought we knew. But Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are an offense because you do not know the plan of God. And I just hear it. I hear in my spirit, Father saying, a double-minded man receives nothing of the Lord. You think you know the plan of God. So you run with it. And you wonder why. You're running amiss, basically. You're running and ain't nothing happening. Because you don't know the full plan of God. So what you do is instead of getting into division, and instead of becoming offended, how about surrendering? How about just saying, you know what? Um, yeah, Jesus. you Jesus. So whatever you say. <laughs> about recognizing and remembering the frailties of your flesh? How about recognizing and remembering you're talking to the creator of heaven and earth? How about recognizing and remembering, oh my God, if he would but move his hand, if he would but blink, you would be gone. That's the reality of it. We don't have space Room. To play these games. What? Who are you playing games with? The devil ain't playing games with you. I guarantee you. And God surely do not play those kind of games. He doesn't play games about disobedience. He doesn't play games with um, division. No, he don't. Oh, he's a real God. He is a real, real God. He is the God that created heaven and earth. He's the God that created you. So you're going to tell him what to do? What? You're going to gonna position yourself that you would be an offense to the Lord God Almighty? What? Excuse me? How about we say, you know what? John said, turn it down just a little bit. How about we say, John said, books could not contain 
all that Jesus did. How about we possibly think about the fact that maybe, just maybe, there is something that God did and something that God may do that isn't written in the Bible. But, 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 but what? <laughs> I mean, duh, but what? So God tells you to go do something that's really different. And you're like, but God, you know, it wasn't written. Well, when in the Bible did he do anything the same way, twice. I, I just, you know. I, you know. You know, help me out. We got the theologians sitting here on the front seat. <laughs> we got the theologian and got the historian. <laughs> this is the deal. So it's better. That if we don't understand, that we keep our mouth closed. And you know where this is coming from is because I was meditating on the Lord tonight, today, and saying, okay, God, where do you want me to come? Do you want me to come from unity? Because he's been talking to me about unity for two or three days. And then he brought uh, back to my attention the word from Lena Bowser, uh, a word to the intercessors about how the enemy is going to try to come and bring division, how he's coming to bring division among the intercessors. And then the, uh, our speaker on yesterday actually shared it. And I was like, whoa. So I've been kind of in betwixt. Should I, you know, or it's Mother Day. Maybe it should be light and fancy and funny. But you know what I did is I prayed in the Holy Ghost. And this is what's coming. Ikarabashete. Roshi Something, just a little something. Just a little something to think about. I have a fear for God. I have a fear of God. I, I don't know. I don't know about anybody else. But I fear God. I fear God. You know what? Probably because I used to work in a nursing home. And I worked in a hospital. And because the Lord told me one day. This is about a man of God that lived holy before the Lord. And he went home to be with the Lord. And I said, well, Lord, you know, how does that work? You know, I'm like, he says, because life and death is in my hand. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Because he said, what about the man? He says, listen, man can get shot nine times. Go to the hospital and take every bullet out. He can get up off the, he get up. Within a week or so, two or three weeks, a month, he walked out the hospital. He might have a cane, he might have a walk, he might need a little rehab, but he's alive. Got a man, somebody else gets shot one time in the head, one time in the chest, one time anywhere, and they're gone. That's like, because life and death is in the hand of God. It really is. I don't know where, where we get this idea. I don't know where we get this idea that we have that much um, power when it comes to, I mean, I mean it's the truth. We, can, we have the authority that Jesus has given us. But see, I had to learn that even in the midst of that, it's according to the will of God. It's still according to the will of God. Me and my former husband went, my niece uh, was diagnosed with a terminal tumor. And um, was diagnosed with a terminal tumor. And went into the hospital on Monday and by Thursday, she was in a coma. Because they did, they, you know, wanted to experiment. Man, oh, I praise God. But we took our, I took, I mean, I was, we were praying and praying. And my former husband had actually laid hands on his, um, his previous wife and raised her from the dead. So we were praying and praying. I took my talit and I laid on her, my, my niece, 35 years old with four children. 
laid my to lead on her and prayed over her, prayed the word of God of healing. And she still went home to be with the Lord. And I had to come. I, it took me a couple of months. This was some years ago. It took me a couple of months. And I'm like, well, Lord, I prayed the word of God. I put my to lead over her just like Jesus. I mean, just, you know, I mean, and I was like, Lord. And you know what he said to me? He said, my word works in my will. Blew me away. I was like, wow. My word works in my will. We can't even take the word of God and manipulate it to make it do what we want it to do. Session City. There is too many pieces, too many parts that God has literally lined up in the just in the last two years that I've known about Intercession City. I ain't touching it. I'm just like, God, I'm here because you told me to come. I'm going to do the next thing you tell me to do. I ain't trying to think it. I ain't trying to figure it. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to do nothing but what you tell me to do. My, I am, I am so serious about this thing because when he spoke to me in in 2017 and told me he wasn't going to allow anything or anyone to interfere with him answering the prayers of his daughter Osa England, I hear you, Lord. <laughs> Almost made me say. You send me on another assignment. Let somebody else do this one. <laughs> oh, God, forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> He's very serious about this. So we as intercessors, we got to line up. We got to come together in unity. We got to recognize the enemy on every hand. I don't care what it looked like, what it smelled like, uh, what it acted like, what it talked like. Recognize that devil of division and put it under your feet. Because the double-minded man will receive nothing of the Lord. And in all your getting, all your prayers, just, just say, okay, Lord, I've been, do, I've been praying this way for years. I've been doing this for years. I, I've been, I've been, you know, and, and wh why? What, 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 what is it that I'm missing? What is it that I haven't done, or what is it that I need to do? Just, just say, you know what, Lord? I lay it all down. Oh my God. Oh, Rabbi Rashi. He is a faithful God. He is a. He is not a God that is unjust. He'll reveal. Sometimes we don't want to hear what he's revealing. So we have a way of ignoring. We kind of throwing it to the side. Sometimes we don't want to hear him when he say, sell all that you have, give it to the poor and follow me. Sometimes we don't want to hear when he says to us, uh, bury who? <laughs> when he said, he said, let me go, let me go attend to my what was it? Father-in-law? Barry who? What? Or that excuse of, oh, but I just got, you know, you know I got I got these, you know, these oxen, and I, I really need to attend to them. Hey, excuse me? I just invited you. I, what? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? You know, see, it's not always, oh, Rabbi, she, it's not always what you do, it's the condition of your heart. Are you willing to do it? And then he began to talk to me the other day anyway about his love. How much do you love him? 
younger. I think I might have been pregnant with my first child. She said, you know, a woman having giving birth is the closest they come to death. My my mom used to say that. Because in the in the in the in the in in that particular time she literally gives her life to bring forth a life. In the sense that if something happens, I guarantee you that mother is going to say, let my child live. She's going to say, let my child live. Oh my God. And this is what Jesus did for us. He gave his life. He gave his life for us. What will we surrender? What will we give for him? What a question. Oh my God, when we say, Lord, I just repent for pride. When we say, Lord, I was wrong. I just was plain old wrong. I'll say it so quick and, I, and don't bother me. Because you know, when I first got saved, I used to pray all the time. That was my prayer, Lord, let me not fall into pride. Let me not have a, uh, uh, be the cause of somebody else falling away from you. Let me not be that cause of division or separation among you and your people, oh God. Mm. Whoa, God. The Lord is good. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. You know, I just hear the Lord saying, pray for those mothers that have children, that they are so stressed and concerned about it. Pray for the mothers and pray for the children. Glory to God, glory to God. We want to pray for you tonight. You know, and we're here at the tent and we're here for Intercession City, but I have not forgotten the intercessors. We have not forgotten the intercessors. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave the bag of prayer cloths here, Robert, so that when you're here and when any of us are here, we can pray for those intercessors. Just continue to pray. You know, because we're intercessors that represent intercessors is who we are. That's what the Lord said. He says, represent and re repent and represent. And God, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Rabbi get it What a God of love. Oh, we serve. What a God of peace. What a God of long suffering. What a God of forgiveness that we serve. Oh, God. What a God of of, of Mm. Provision. What a God that hears our every cry, our every, every, every cry, our every need. You know, Lord God. You know, even before we ask, you know all about it. Mm. Oh, and I lift up Derek and I lift up Bernard tonight. Mother, and God has heard your cry. God has heard your And I speak to the ex prodigal and I say, Come.
come home. We don't call you prodigal. We call you ex-prodigal because we believe that you are coming home now in Jesus' name. Steve, Steve, we just speak to you and we say, come home. Come home. Come home to the Lord God Almighty. Your father awaits on you. You were raised. You were taught. You know who he is. And it's okay. It's okay. He's not moved by your sin. He said it's always been. Well, I, he says, but I am moved by your repentance. Repent. Repent and come home to Father. Oh, God. Repent and come home. Ah, sete koronabasata. I pray for the teenager out there. The one that's between 10 and 16 that's so troubled. 10 and 18 that's so troubled. Lonely. Don't know which way to go, what to do. Don't know how to handle that situation where they're trying to force you into a gang and they're trying to force you to do drugs and you don't know what to do and you, you don't know who to talk to. But God says, I'm here. Just call on Jesus. Just talk to him. You ain't got to do it the way I did. Just talk to him. Oh God, oh God, oh God, we thank you. Oh, oh Teresa. Teresa, the Lord has heard your cry. He has actually looked at your lonely, sad heart. And he said, if you would just reach out to him, oh Teresa. Nancy, God is speaking to you right now. Ah, that's Nancy is a mother. Nancy, God is speaking to you right now. And he says, hold on. Hold on just a little bit longer. Hold on. Hold on just a little bit longer. Jeff, Jeff, the Lord has actually heard your cry. He's heard your cry. And he said, if you would get up right now, you can walk away. If you would get up, you can walk away. Because he has another plan for you. He has a whole other plan for you. Oh, God in Jesus. Oh, we just speak to the headaches. We speak to the mind that is so confused. We speak to the mind that is so wayward and messed up because of drugs and just because of confusion. The blood of Jesus, come Lord Jesus. Come and heal, set free. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. Oh, God. I want you to know, mothers, that the word of God works. I have a, um, and if you would like a copy, just inbox me or put it on here. Send me a message. But I have a prayer that is all scriptural. And it's called a mother's prayer. And I read it over my son. He's 31 now. I started reading it over him when he was probably about six months old. And he wouldn't go to sleep until I, uh, I didn't, I wasn't reading it then. Actually, I was just, I just knew the scripture. And I would declare it over him until he was about 14. He wouldn't go to sleep until I came in his room and I prayed over him the word of God. 
I want you to know that the Word of God works. The Word of God always works when it comes to salvation. <laughs> because rather this body, this flesh is sick or not, according to man, he would that none should perish and that all should have eternal life with him. So that would always be his will. So I would pray, I would come in his bedroom and I would pray the word over him. I just speak life over him. I would call him a mighty man of valor. I would say he's a man of integrity. He's a man of honor. You know, I would break fear off of him and just release the word, the word, the word. When he got 16 years old, he came to me. This is just a little testimony for you mothers. He came to me and he said to me, Ma, I want to stay, I want to move at the church. <laughs> I said, what? Move at the church? Huh? I said, how you going to go live at the church? I said, you in school. How you going to do that? God had blessed me. I was able to put him in Christian school. He said, Mom, you know, I just feel like I'm supposed to be in the church. Well, I understood that feeling because I love the church as a, a, a young girl. I love the church as well. He put on Facebook today that I was his twin because we, we, we do act alike. <laughs> but, and we look alike. And he's a tremendous intercessor. So at 16, I said, okay, as long as you promise me you're going to get your GED. 16. They had a little marginal home on the property of the church. Church in the country. He ain't have a gun. So how you gonna eat? So well, pastor's wife be out there. You know, she probably fixes something every once in a while. Sixteen. He goes out there. No problem. Taught himself how to play the piano, play the drums, and the guitar. And can pray and preach and prophesy and all that. But he, you know, it was, I had two girls and I wanted a son. And I remember the Lord telling me one day, he says, you're going to, you know, he says, I think I told him, I said, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you like Samuel. And God reminded me of that. <laughs> he reminded me of that when he was about 24. He had went to. Uh, police academy, he went to barber school, and then he came to me one day, and he had been working for the city, and all this kind of stuff, he came to me one day, he says, Mom, I really feel like I'm supposed to move to Orlando to go to the Orlando House of Prayer. I said, okay, so what does that mean? Well, I'm, you know, they got, you know, it's Orlando House of Prayer, it's 24-7 prayer, you know, and harp and bowl. I said, oh, okay, so what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go there, Mom. I'm going to stay at the church. <laughs> I said, you're going to stay at the church. How are you going to eat, son? How are you going to do this? Mom, don't worry about that. You know, God will take care of it. I am so serious. I said, okay, just make sure you're not, you know, you're not on anybody else, you know. Let me know if you need something, whatever. I'm in Gainesville. He moves. He, he comes to Orlando. He was there for two years. In 2017, when the Lord called me to go around, to drive around the state of Florida, I'll never forget him sitting on the sofa saying, Well, Mom, if you're going to drive around the coastline of Florida, where are you going to sleep? <laughs> I looked at him like, Excuse me? <laughs> I said, I guess I'll sleep in my car. And my other son, he says, my, my, my um, adopted son, he says, Well, if you sleep in your car, where are you going to take a shower? Like, why are y'all asking all the questions? And I, you know, and I'm just reminded, I'm like, this guy, he can't help himself. He's just like his mom. He still do stuff like that. I mean, he just do, he just take off on a plane, something's going on somewhere. He just feel led and he need to go pray about it, pray into it, shift this atmosphere, do it. He just be, I, I find out about it from intercessors. Hey, Lonnie is in Washington, D.C. praying at the Capitol. I'm like, what? How did he get the what? What did happen? You know, but I just shared this because 
He's 31, and he's getting ready to he's getting ready to run for a political office. And he's just shaking up things still. Praying and still preaching and prophesying. You know? But I started praying the word of God over him because I didn't want generational curses upon him. The word of God will work for your children. But I prayed it for years. It was, but you know, by the time you pray, it's about a page and a half or whatever. But when you pray it every day consecutively, it's like breathing. You don't have to read it or anything anymore. And when he hears it and hears it, God's word will bring forth life. It shall not return void. All that I prayed over him had to do with the scroll that was written on his life. God honored it and brought it to pass. Now I just pray in Jesus' name that he will give me some grandbabies. <laughs> He's married to my beautiful baby, my daughter. I call her my baby girl because she's the youngest of my children uh, and in-law. I mean, children and my son-in-law. She's the youngest of all of them. And she says, Mom, I'm your youngest daughter. I said, yes, you are. <laughs> but how awesome is God? How awesome is God? So, the Lord said, let's not be double-minded. He says, let's come together in unity. Let's get aside, let's put away all this thinking we all that in a bag of chips. Because at the end of the day, it's all about God. We, 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 you know, we ain't nothing but the word. I mean, all we have is the authority that Jesus gives us through the word of God. All we have is the power that the Holy Spirit works through us. The Holy Spirit works the power through us. The Holy Spirit brings that through us. And it's, it's all in align with God. It's all in align with the word. And I just bless your children today. Hallelujah, glory to God. We just release a blessing upon your children, upon your life, and upon all that God wants to do. Amen. Wesley. I'm going to Wesley. Praise God for the word. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. Um, John, do you have anything you want to share before we close out? Okay. Um, I'm going to close out in prayer. We want to thank God for John McDonald. Yes, up. John McDonald. Hallelujah. Awesome, John. Yeah. Kingdom. Kingdom Apostolic Network. Amen. <laughs> All the way, originally from Australia. Australia. <laughs> now in the States. Hallelujah. Declaring the Word of God, the Kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, he ministered, John ministered. Uh, what was it? Last week? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yes, last last Sunday, and uh, it was so. Sean. Yes. Uh, Kingdom Living Music. Yeah. Uh, I, I have it right here. Kingdom Living Media. Right here. John. Last one on the back. John. John. Say hi. Kingdom Living Media. Dot com. Okay. John, John has some amazing, Apostle John has some amazing material, material. there right. on Kingdom. You and want to go there and get you it. You go to kingdomlivingmedia.com and his materials will be listed there. Powerful, Powerful. teaching on the Kingdom of God. Amen. Amazing. amazing. Uh, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you have delivered the word, Lord God, through Arabella. We thank you, Father, that that we are one with one another as you are one with the Son and we are with you. And we thank you, Father, for John 17. We thank you, dear God, that there's nothing that the enemy will throw at us or will cause division, that we will keep short accounts, Lord God, that we'll go to our brother, our sister, Lord Jesus, and not allow the enemy, Father, to divide us. We ask, God, that uh, the kingdom of God would come, that your will be done on earth 
here in Intercession City, Lord, as it is in heaven, that thy kingdom come. And your promise, Lord God, to your daughter uh, of Sea England, Lord, that you, Lord God, will complete her vision for worldwide revival, Father. And it will start his vision, yes. And we thank you for it, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you would continue to bless those, Lord God, who have uh, listened in, Lord, on Facebook Live, and those, Lord, that have needs. We pray, Father, that every need would be made, Lord God, uh, uh, that is made known unto you, Lord God, would be answered, Lord God, through your Son, Jesus, who is our healer, who is our deliverer, who is our supplier of every need. So I just declare your needs be supplied according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you.